Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, along with someone who needs no introduction. Uh, that is Rob Maurer, founder and host of Tesla Daily. He basically runs the table, anything Tesla related. And when some of Rob's uh, work vectored across my desk around tax credits, I thought we got to get him on Loop TV here to uh, really frame this in. Welcome, Rob. And maybe just to uh, set the stage here is, can you give us a brief history of EV tax credits in the US? Yeah, for sure. First of all, uh, thanks for that lovely introduction. I'm happy to be, be on Loop TV again. Uh, it's always a pleasure. So yeah, the EV tax credit originally started out back in like 2009 as a $7,500 tax credit. Um, there was a 200,000 vehicle cap per manufacturer on that $7,500 tax credit. So Tesla hit that, you know, a couple of years back in 2019 when the Model 3 really started ramping up um, for deliveries in the United States. And since then, uh, Tesla has had no electric vehicle tax credit, while some other manufacturers currently are still getting it because they haven't sold that many electric vehicles yet. Uh, so Ford still got theirs. Um, Nissan, you know, a lot of foreign automakers still have that credit. Uh, really creating a disadvantage for Tesla to the tune of $7,500 uh, versus some other EV manufacturers. So what's happening right now um, with the new administration? Uh, with the, the mechanics of the like tax that. credit is the, on the mechanics yeah. of the tax credit, do people actually just get $7,500 back from the government? They get a check from the government and they take it off their taxes at the end of the year. How does that, do you know how that actually works? Yeah, that's a really good question. That'll come back up later on when we talk about this new proposal. Um, right now, how it's structured is you have to have tax liability of that amount. And then if you have $7,500 of tax liability, it just comes off, but it's not a refundable tax credit. That's actually one of the things that they're proposing to change. So do we wanna go into the kind of the details of that new proposal? Uh, one, one other question for those who have been loosely following around uh, sales of EV tax credits, it's something that Tesla does it's unrelated to today's topic, but you just want to quick frame in what that's all about. Yeah. So that's a, a complex other area of the business. Um, but there are regulatory credits that manufacturers can earn and sell based on the emissions profiles of the vehicles that they're selling. So obviously Tesla with no emissions is earning those credits. Manufacturers that are selling a lot of um, high emission vehicles um, have to buy credits on the market from manufacturers like Tesla to make up for those. And that's different throughout the world. Most countries have some sort of this um, credit structure. That's different than what we're talking about here with these tax credits. These are consumer-based credits versus those are more of like emissions penalties Beautiful. that Tesla is getting compensated for from other manufacturers not meeting those emissions profiles. Same of the, some, same of the similar words used, but totally different topics. And exactly. let's uh, move forward to uh, kind of our infrastructure bill and, and the implications. Yeah, so the new proposal here that's going through Congress right now, this is kind of our first insight into how a new structure might look under this new administration. So certainly things could change. This is still very early stage. Nothing here is final. Um, but the proposal that's been worked through a committee in the Senate over the last couple of days has some really high implication changes in it. So if we want to go through those, um, we can just bullet point it. So First is the removal of the manufacturer cap. So that 200,000 vehicle cap, that would be gone under the new language here. They're basically building on that old credit, uh, the old tax credit system, but removing that cap. So that would mean Tesla would then become eligible again for that $7,500 credit. Um, they're adding a potential $2,500 US tax credit for vehicles that are have their final assembly done in the United States. So I would take the credit up to 10,000. And then they're adding another $2,500 for union made in the United States, bringing that potentially up to $12,500. So Tesla not unionized wouldn't be eligible for that, how it's currently structured. And again, this could change, um, but that would bring you know Tesla's tax credit up to 10,000, potentially some other automakers that are both manufacturing in the US and union made up to 12,500. So, so a vehicle like the Ford Mustang Mach-E would actually not be eligible, it's made in Mexico, but the new F-150 funny. Lightning, they're planning on making that in Detroit. So that would be eligible for 12,500 then. So there's going to be a little bit of a, some weirdness happening here if this does go through in that way. So let's take the $10,000 credit example. A typical uh, Tesla is what, $60,000, something around there today? Yeah, called 60-50, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, so we're talking about, I mean, this is measurable, um, you know, 15, 20% off the, the, the top. One, before we get too excited, is I know uh, you 
I don't think you work in politics. And uh, do you have any sense <laughs> about the probability that this actually gets through as it stands today? No, and I wish I did have a better understanding of, you know, how the legislative process works here. From things that I've read, it seems like there's some expectations for a timeline of maybe, you know, sometime in August. I think there's a Congress recess in September is what I've read. So that's kind of the date that I'm looking at. Um, but again, yeah, not in politics, just kind of trying to absorb as much as I can from people that kind of have discussed this and have a little bit more experience. Makes sense. And the the overriding theme here, this is uh, related to Biden's infrastructure and where is it infrastructure, renewable energy? How would, what's the headline of uh, the, the legislation that this would get wrapped into? Yeah, so this is called the the Clean Energy Air Act or something like that. I think I've got it here. Um, something, yeah, Clean okay. Energy for America Act is what this proposal is under. Got it, okay. So uh, that, and that's a good that, point because there's actually a lot of other details in here. We're focusing on the EV tax credit, of course, but this is, you know, 140, 40 page long proposal here. So there's lots of details that are, you know, other energy related topics in there. It may or may not, you know, the details of this or the specifics that we're talking about today may or may not uh, become into law, but it's safe to say that there is an opportunity for these tax credits to come back to Tesla. And as I think about uh, potentially buying my first uh, Tesla, I get excited about saving some money. I also in the back of my mind think, well, is Tesla and Ford and GM, are they just going to raise the price of the vehicles by the, the subsequent tax credit? Yeah, so that's a really great question. We have seen Tesla over the last few weeks pretty consistently increasing every couple of weeks by $500 on some of the lower priced versions of their vehicles. So that may be due to you know rising supply chain costs, things like that, or it could just be uh, sort of in preparation for a looming tax credit like this. So certainly if you throw $10,000 on there, you know, Tesla is pretty much selling everything that they can make right now. They seem extremely production constrained. Uh, there's good reason to believe that they would continue to increase prices. Um, one thing to note here, though, is there is a price limit on this new structure in the proposal of $80,000. So, you know, obviously Model 3 and Model Y easily fall under that. But when you get into the Model S territory, Model X, uh, maybe the base price version will be eligible. Again, if it, things could still change, but um, at that eighty thousand dollar price limit, they, you know, if you add any sort of options to them, they'll they'll become ineligible. ineligible. I guess thinking this through is that uh, there is the competition piece as well. It doesn't these automakers just aren't free to raise prices indefinitely, even with these tax credits coming. And so I suspect that you know they can kind of keep each other in check. Uh, this is something that I, you know, kind of rewinding six twelve months ago, I thought. Uh, would never, we'd never see these tax credits to Tesla. Uh, Tesla would, would benefit, Tesla buyers would benefit from this. And um, I'm glad to see that it, 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 the potential is uh, quickly rising for that. Uh, what's this gonna do to demand? Assuming they don't uh, significantly increase prices, you, you said that they're having a hard time catching up. Do you have any sense about what this ultimately means for uh, the, the sales numbers? Yeah, I think the underlying Tesla bull thesis is that demand is really high. We heard Elon Musk on the Q1 call say that it's, you know, it's the best it's ever been really. So it doesn't seem to be any sort of demand, you know, issues on the horizon. What I would note though, is if we look forward maybe a year or two, I think this is coming at a really good time for Tesla because they are now, you know, Giga Shanghai is up and running. Giga Berlin is going to be up and running here in, you know, let's say six months, nine months, something like that. Same thing with Giga Texas. So Tesla is going to start producing for Europe in Giga Berlin, in Asia, Giga Shanghai. They're going to have Fremont and Giga Texas both operating, and they can pretty much put all that production then into the United Makes States. Makes sense. So while they've been exporting from, from the U.S. so far, if demand rises significantly locally from this tax credit, that's going to you know, save on logistics costs. It's going to save on working capital from turnaround times, not having those on boats. So there's a lot of underlying benefits too that's not just like, one demand level, there's kind of these little pockets. And if the North American pocket rises significantly from this, there's going to be benefits from that. Makes a ton of sense. Uh, the topic of taxes is something I rarely get excited about and welcome. Uh, the the concept of tax credits is a whole different story. Rob, uh, you do great work. Thanks for illuminating uh, Loop TV today. On behalf of Rob, Tesla Daily, and Gene, and Loop TV, bye for now.